Bolo is trained in a, a European sport called IPO. IPO um, has tracking, obedience, and protection. And Alyssa wants to become a handler in IPO. So much like you do in horses, you partner in the inexperience with the experienced animal. And they uh, learn together. So the inexperienced handler learns the skills. So that's what Bolo and Alyssa are doing here. So we go over to our store and we get turkey, pumpkin, and rice. It's a really good filler, never upset his stomach. It's a really good emergency food that you can get anywhere that you are. You cook it up, mix it all together in a big Tupperware bowl, the frog's happy as a lark. <laughs> you put it in there, so it's good. All right. Yeah, that's fine. And actually, if your dog is constipated, anything like that, pumpkin. It, it really kind of resets some guts. Yeah, it's yeah. really Draw good. Draw bleed on the gut system. So if your dog Thanks. goes off his food, or he's outside and he's eating grass and he's vomiting some, that wouldn't be a bad thing. It's just because most of the time that's just an acid buildup. You know, feed them that for a few days. It's really then, good. then you can also do like a dollop of yogurt. If they yeah, we're real big on and stone. I think Stonyfield is the one she likes the best. It seems to the back. The, you got the most acid. The acid is that, but it's more resistant to anything. It, it lives longer. Yes, that was something. I'm sorry, dog. Yeah, my so, shepherd loves yogurt. Yeah. Um, you mentioned the grass thing. Mm -hmm. I've got friends that are like, oh my gosh, stop, you're eating the grass. But because I've had Malinois and German Shepherds for a number of years now, I was told that that's not necessarily a bad thing when they're eating it because it was part of their it's an hereditary. That they don't have any roughage in their diet. Okay, so it I mean, because be they lot. don't, my dogs go out and they'll like graze in an area, but it they can be lots of things, vomit or anything, but they sometimes it's stress. So yeah, sometimes, sometimes they're, they're bored, just they bored and they're just, you I'm know, gonna you just, I'm gonna be. If so I'm is it something they should not let them do? Or no, no, let them do I it would, it, I'm not familiar with where they might have sprayed pesticides. Yeah, yeah. No, that's, yeah. <laughs> they're only loose in my yard, in my parents' yard, and my parents live on a wilderness preserve. So there's no chemicals. Because right. I, I'm, I'm notorious too, sitting out in the yard working the dogs, picking up blade grass and chilling on them. No <laughs> <laughs> means I'm bored. Okay. Yeah. So look, look and, and that's I mean, a good point. If, if you know, yeah. you know, if you know you're off in the woods like that, it's okay. Okay. It's okay. They're gonna yeah. eat everything they can find. If you got them running loose through the woods. They're going to sniff and lick everything in the world. Oh, oh God, they'll eat a five-day-old possum. It's called being you know, a possum. I mean, he <laughs> <laughs> got a possum recently. Right, I'm just saying. You know, of course, that's why their temperature is about 102. I, I they they can deal with that a little better than we can. <laughs> so, you know, the good Lord above, and I don't know you really just stuff that the good Lord above made those things to, to be able to eat that. Because at some point, that's what they ate. Okay. Then you have chemicals. Now, what's everybody have in their garages and everything else? They have different kind of yes. fertilizers, fertilizers yeah. and everything. So you have dogs that end up having... Uh, Which reminds me, fertilizer. A lot of rain this year. Flowers are doing really good. A lot of fertilizer around. Be really careful. Um, dog... People have some fertilizer, they had it in the bucket where they've been fertilizing everything. Didn't think about it, it was sitting outside the garage. It rained that night. Well, they're not thinking, I mean, you know, been, I'm sure it's one of those long days. Oh, oh crap, I gotta take my wife out. I gotta get in here and get this done. And you set the bucket down, and then the dog goes and drinks out of the bucket. So now you got a chemical burn all the way through, and the dog survived it. But I'm just saying, it's just it's little things like that that if you can stay on top of that. Dry, you want to brush off. So yeah, you get dry, it. brush off. It's wet. Rinse. Your fit, your fur may feel like a thickened area under the hair coat, may feel like a big knot. That's typically a chemical burn that's raised that area that the hair is actually sitting on top. Of. When you get down to the skin, it may be red or blistered. Animal may want to lick or scratch that area, but what do we need to do? We need to prevent him from doing it because what's that's on the outside now can end up on the inside. So we need to stop that. Plus, we want to try and keep that skin intact, so we don't want him opening it up either by licking it until he licks the top layer of skin off or scratching it open. Do not let the animal uh, lick the affected area. Uh, if you have to put them in a big uh, Elizabethan collar or let's, one of the neck collars. Let me interrupt just a second. One thing I do notice, um, the Thunder Shirts, that would not be a bad idea to have in your first aid pack for things such as that. The dog gets something on it, your rabbit does two things. It, it'll help calm them and it keeps them from being able to get to it. So that's they, possible. They can get through it. Yeah. So, I mean, if you don't want to carry one of the big e collars, 
I have several hanging on the wall. But that's a, that's a quick and, and, and the thunder and the thunder shirts. I'm all over the thunder shirts. They, they work. Yeah, they do. They, they, they work. Win. Yeah, most of your bikes and your dogs are going to be so investigated. Your cats are going to be face or something like that. Their paws too, but you know, your dogs are going to be mostly walking by and they're going to get them on the legs. Or they run their nose, run their nose in my, there. My dog's breeder who lives in Cumming mm -hmm. had a copperhead in his garage this mm -hmm. week. Yeah. Ooh, and they're, and oh, snakes, have, snakes have been terrible this year. Uh, All right. Really bad. But anything just like on the, I had a rabid skunk got my kennels. It actually kind of broke through the fence after the dogs. And they said, my young know, watch their, look at their faces and stuff like that. If they're fighting, I'm going to kind of bite them or something. Or their feet. But they didn't, he didn't bite any of the dogs. I don't know how you got time you to don't. really determine this when that <laughs> thing is hold up and looking at me. They all look now, like the left one. <laughs> the, one thing, the one thing I will tell you about rattlesnakes, especially your big knees, Cambridge, yeah, this is important. Your Eastern Diamondbacks and stuff like that. They have quit rattling. They've evolved. They've evolved. So they'll they warn don't you. Rattle anymore. They don't warn you. If they feel like they're somewhat safe, they'll rattle. If they feel like they're getting ready to get guilt, stop rattling. rattling. Yeah, stop, stop rattling. rattling and start back. Start striking. Rattling mm -hmm. so. Remember your venomous snakes, they've got the big jaws on the side. A lot of them are in trees now too because of the water. Mm -hmm. That's the big thing about your non-poisonous snakes. They have a lot of bacteria in your mouth. So if you do have to get bit by them, although it's a non-poisonous non bite, you still can get very, very sick from them. Never underestimate a non-poisonous snake bite. They can think four which can cause some pretty severe infections. All right, Brian, go ahead. <laughs> Try to identify where the animal was bitten. Consider bites to be wet till proven otherwise. So dogs will. And wet is what? Venom. Oh, venom, right. Dry bite is where their fangs go in, but they don't inject any venom wet. So you get and and venom. that means you don't want to touch it with your hands and wipe your mouth or your eyes. Yeah, because it will, mucous membranes, it will absorb just immediately <clears> through those two. Try to identify what type of snake you have. What is it that, that we're doing? Uh, keep the animal as calm as possible. Be familiar with your weight of your animal. So when you go by the vet's office, you know, just stick them on the scale, find out what they weigh. Identify the time uh, from the bite. Make sure you call your vet early so they can talk about it. Now, you're probably not going to get an anti-venom if you're vet. Yeah. That's not going to happen. You're going to get steroids and fluid therapy. It's more of an, of a, of an airway issue yeah. and probably some antibiotics if there is any type of infection. Right. Hi. Your bleeding is usually associated with some sort of trauma, of course. Uh, the flow of the blood can, can, can determine its origin. If you got the bright red spurt stuff that's painting the ceiling, it's probably more of an arterial bleeding. If it's a flowing dark, dark colored blood, deoxygenated blood, it's going to be more of a venous flow. Blood loss can lead to, can lead to shock or even to death. Exanguination. In the terms of the old paramedics, all bleeding will stop eventually. We want to try to stop it before. before that point. Stop eventually. Yeah. Yeah. All, bleeding stop, yeah. all bleeding stops eventually. Yeah. Yeah. When your heart stops pumping it out. Venus. Venus is the deoxygenated, the blue vein. So that's really bad? No, that's, that's, that's the better one of the two. Oh, okay. If you're going to have one, okay. you want the full, because it's just flow. If okay. it's squirting, that's what's coming directly off your heart. I mean, it's the same way you tie this basic first aid. You put the dressings on there, you bleach through the dressings, don't take those dressings off, put more on there. Because the blood's already starting to clot, so you don't want to rip the dressings you put on there and start that process over again clotting. 
Just if it bleeds through the first five, five addresses, add more to it. Direct pressure on the wound and keep it uh, with a clean padding of some sort. You have pressure bandages, which is just, uh, if you're wrapping, put a twist in the middle of it. Keep a roll of that wrap with you. Yeah. Or co flex. I mean, it's all kind of the same. That's thing. the best thing, but it just causes a little bit of pressure. It's not enough to okay. shut down the arteries, but it's enough to shut down the capillary flow or whatever's bleeding. You have pressure points and they're limited to the legs because that's about the only place you're going to be able to really hold any kind of pressure point. The tourniquet's the last resort, and if applied, you must transport immediately. So, what I'm going to say about that is if you have to that wrap and you put it on, because you're probably going to put it on tighter than it's really. Or then it might should be. depends on the wound. Transport immediately anyway, because let them assess where you're at. Because I don't want you to do this. Oh, we got it stopped. You know, by the next morning it's fine. But the paw is about this big. Then that's when you get the necrosis and things like that. So what is your MOI NOI? Your mechanism of injury or your nature of illness? Are they breathing? Any obstructions to the airway? If their airway is obstructed, fix it. Whatever you have to do, fix it. Make them where they can breathe. Because no matter what you do, it's not wrong. If they can't breathe, whatever you're trying to do, yep. it's going to be better than doing nothing. If they can't breathe, it's going to be over with. Yep. Well, that's why I was saying earlier on, some of these things, it's not that you have to be that proficient, but we're giving you at least some knowledge so you can try to do whatever you can. And for me, that would make my heart feel better if I lost my dog, that at least I had enough knowledge to try and do something rather than something I have helpless. Airway open. Yeah. I, if they're bleeding, control it. And that just might mean putting a simple hand over something. What's their heart rate? Do you notice any broken bones? Lay down. <laughs> Keep animal calm, warm, and transport immediately because he's definitely going to, he's definitely in some serious shape. Alright, your first aid kit. Now this is what you need to keep at home to hopefully divert yourself from having a dog flipping out hopefully keep yourself calm and to make that right decision of what you need to do. <clears throat> first thing for your first aid kit is you're named an emergency contact person as well as your animal's contact person. Because I don't have any of that with me, but you know what, if I had it in my dog thing that's in my truck and Danny's first one on the scene, they're going through your stuff trying to find out who to call, well hopefully I'd have it in, I would be more likely to have all the information in my dog first aid kit and it may save me. There are many problems with not having a dog that's not correct trained. Uh, number one, if it has a broken leg, it needs to be put up. If it has a broken pelvis, they don't cast that. It's mainly cage rest, so that means it only goes out the potty, right? So the trick is, is uh, and y'all probably do, but if you don't, please work on correct training your dog. What are you going to do if, like in Ringo, a couple years ago, the tornado hits and destroys the place? It is now a disaster area. If you can't crate your dog, it can't go. They won't let you take your animal. If you can crate it, then you can get it taken care of. It has to be able to what be crated. What do you mean it can't go? It can't go to the shelter? It can't go to the shelter. Okay, That's, I didn't know you. Yeah. I didn't know what you mean. You can't yeah, it, it, it can't. It can't be, it it can't can't be taken care of. It can't go. Okay, got it. So, it can't go in. It's got to stay at your house. It right. Can't go to no matter what. Even if nobody's there to stay there look after it, it's on its own. No matter how crate train, I just think Right, but a lot of people don't, and, I, and I'm crate. sure y'all do, but that is a huge and so I, I don't know reason I tell y'all that is tell all your friends. Please try to tell them. It's 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 for their own good. It's like a horse that won't let you uh, pick its foot up. Well, if it's got a broke leg, how are you supposed to work on it? You know, I mean, you know, for them, and so that's why I feed mine there. Mine, you can leave the crate. When it comes time to bed, you have to tell them. Well, they go over there and get in their crate by themselves. Lay down. Lay down. All right, just news to me, there'll be a couple really important things. We're going to kind of show you how to camel back your dog. Anybody ever know what, does anybody know what that is? If you're ever taking your dog to the vet and they come out this big hump on their back like a camel boat. That's, that's how you get stuff to fluids. Am I going to get MIUA? Right, everybody about water in the You don't have to water them, so if you know you're going to be out on a long day, not a bad idea. You're good camel back and that's what we do. If we know we're going to be training and doing a lot, then that's what we do is you can wet. Can and is this just water or is it a special so fluid? It's like it's normal so and, and it's cheap and you buy it from your bag, keep you a couple bags of it. I'm sorry, you said you injected you yeah, injected. Yeah. We'll show okay. you, you pull us and we'll we'll go over that but it's simple. While we're on that, just come around here and we'll show you. Y'all sit down, y'all yeah. sit down and relax. Get wherever you want to.
ain't All in right. that kind of condition. So if you, <laughs> so if you go, you are going to camel back with these guys. You're going to give them some fluids to where they can go off. Oh, you're gonna, you're you're gonna just, I get the skin, kind of makes a little triangle area right there. Just stick them, stick them easily. And make sure it don't go out the sides. That's easier that, to happen than you think. Yep. So you want to make sure that it just goes straight in. Get your vet to show you how to do this. You know, go talk yeah, to them. I'm going to try and Tell you what it is. So why is I mean, I'm not yeah, you're keeping them from, from but dehydrating. But somebody like me gets every kind of, I mean, that's what you're going to going out and if you're going to be using your dog all day, that's the thing you're going to be working. Okay. You're going to be working your dog all well, it's day. it's also good if they have an upset stomach and they've been throwing up a lot. Yeah. And, and your vet sends them home. And it's Instead of you having to take them back to have fluids given, you can say, hey, I can get so key fluids. And would you just go over with me and spend a little while? And then go over again. And now, we send bags and these home with people that are capable of doing it. And let them get them home because the dog's happier at home than they are we're talk, with us. We're, we're talking about, you know, before we get started doing all that stuff, if you want to muzzle one. And all you guys, if you don't have the commercial made muzzle like our friend back here does. You want your buckle. To me, you always want your buckle underneath. You put a twist in your leash. And he's really good about that. He just do this. And he's going to make a wire out of here. You got a, ten, a timer, too. And there's the muzzle. And there's your muzzle. Go around behind his ears. Underneath the ears. Right behind his head. And you want to make sure that you don't get up in their eyes because then it becomes a fight. Now we keep all this. A little roll feet. of gauze works really good. Vet wrap actually works pretty good too. You can do that. And then he's muzzled. He can't open his mouth for nothing. And all you're trying to do, you don't want to do it so tight that you're cutting everything off. You want to do it just to keep their mouth shut so that they won't bite you. And plus you can still check. You still check, check your CRT. CRT to keep real time. Now, if you're using like gauze, <laughs> like if we're going to use a piece of gauze or something like that, you sort of hold it over here. Make you a nice big long string of it. Do this. And you just kind of want to do a. Uh, Hitch like that. Just, the same deal. Just make sure your knots are on. And then ride right up behind his ears. Are you going to lay down now and just be a good boy? So it's just real easy things. You use your little roll of gauze at the, at the drugstore and throw it in your pack. And he's most. And it's good for multiple things. You could do that with that wrap? You can do that. Be careful. Right. You don't want to get too tight because what's yeah, one thing that we're going over? We don't. Yeah. We don't want to get right. into airway issues. You can do it with a shoelace if you have to. If I didn't have this, I wouldn't have. I would have thought of just wrapping it up here. I never would have crossed my mind. It'll come off. They're, 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 they're pointing. Yeah. They're pointing. Plus, they'll they grab out. their paw for a second. They'll go. Whoop. But it still wouldn't have crossed my mind unless yeah. you guys yeah. have shown me. Now the other thing that we talked about. Let's talk about choking right quick while we've got him up here. Now there's a simple thing called the Heimlich Maneuver. It's the same thing that's been going around for everybody. Right, I'm a CPR instructor on humans as well. If I'm going to do the Heimlich Maneuver, I'm going to get right there here behind us. Here comes the peanuts. And I'm going to watch the peanuts fly. <laughs> okay, so how did we do that? We were up behind him, right? Alright, Cody, stand up. So we got Cody up like this. We, we, we know his abdomen's right there, right? We're going to be more up behind him, over him. We're just going to lift up. We're just going to pick up. So even if you have a really big dog and you're not that strong, you can get behind him and you lift up with your legs. And all you want to do right. is just cause that just pressure. Just see where his rib cage is yeah, right going up. There, just right behind his rib cage. Just right up there. Okay, Cody, lay down. Down. See it? You've been on so many of these tables, this should not be a bad thing for you. Okay. One other thing, you got a dog that's down, right? Do you want to just take them and roll them over by their legs across their back? No, you can cause some pretty, you can cause a gut twist. You can cause a blood. So if he's basically. down like this, and I need to see this side, I'm going to go underneath, and then I'm going to roll him over to get him moved up. So right. always keep 
always keep them strong from side to side. Never all the way over. Uh, when they're in surgery, when they're in surgery and they're still unconscious, the same. It's, it's, that's the way we look. They turn them only half. Back is always up, never all the way over. Never, them back, never back, roll them all the way over. I would now. I just want to make sure that his his dorsal, this right here, his spine is what crosses over. I don't want it to. I don't want this part of him to ever hit the table. Gotcha. Eat it. I don't care what it is. No matter what, even if you're oh. just. Even if you're in bed, I mean, you know. They're all over on their own. They're all over on their own. Yeah, but because you're, you're talking about a dog that is in they're, distress. They're, okay, yeah, they're cutting their nails. Right. It's, a, it's so. more of their sickness. Yeah, yeah, it's so more of a distress thing. Okay, so we're so now we've got him. Uh, down and we've got some CPR issues. He's not breathing and everything. So the first thing we want to do is we want to check his airway, right? Cody's really good about this. Cody. And you know, dogs have a flip top head. I mean, most of them go their mouth a lot wider than you think. Yeah. That's how they swallow tennis balls. <laughs> so, if it, so who, who runs the ball? Who runs, who runs the ball? Who runs the tennis ball? Who plays ball, ball with their dog? Nobody. Cuts ball. Okay. <laughs> one thing that I've noticed here is they got one's got a hand on. Well, you put, you know what that's for? It ain't for you to throw it. So you pull <laughs> it back out. Yeah. So you right. reach ready and yank it so out. So you got this. You got this dog. He's down. Got a tennis ball hung in his throat, right? You got him on their on their on their side. You go right up under there. You flip top them just like he's talking about, and their mouths will open like he's maybe a little bit. Longer. You can catch them just behind their jaws, and if you'll pull forward. A lot of times you can get it to come forward you and reach. Uh -huh. You get them right ball behind ball their jawbone, and you can pull forward, and that'll kind of disengage, <laughs> and and it'll let you reach in and have a little more room. Sit, good boy. All right, so so we want to check his airway out, right? We want to look in it, right? When we start doing something, and we're having this. You always want to check your airway yeah. first. Make sure it's open and clear. Is that what the problem was? Is that why we're getting ready to do CPR? So when you open your mouth, we see a big tongue in there. So we just want to reach in there and grab that tongue, pull it in out, and there's his airway. It's a good thing to practice this with your dog before it's in distress. To know that it's okay. You just gotta know everything's good. So what I've done with him is, if you know, where's my hand at? Cover his eyes. So he doesn't see what's coming. He don't see what's happening. <laughs> now, I don't want to pitch his lips. He's got like really big fat, you know, mouth. Well, he's, he's got a big over mouth. Anyways, he's, a, he's an anomaly as they are anyway. Just cook that. So, now I'm going to just open his mouth. And as I open it. See that? See that? Now, I've got his airway. Now, he's not really enjoying this, but I can see his trick. And just do it a little at a time. Okay, so don't pull out like Cody. Well, you well when you're just the teaching them because you don't want Why to. Why don't you get your hand inside their mouth? Underneath? Yeah, anyway, just reach them pull outside. Just when you when you got them held, when you got them held, put your hands in the mouth. It's okay. Just get them used to having being handled around. I did that when my shepherd is like snapping. So we're going to do CPR on a dog. We're going to do CPR on this guy. Yes. You've done this before. Show us where you were going to get the pulse. That's where we're fixing oh, okay, We're getting on with that. We're just, I'm hitting on that, so we're starting here. Okay, so we've got this guy, but nice big deep chested dog, right? <laughs> so what we're looking for is right behind this shoulder. We've got this straight now. We're looking right here behind the shoulder, right? So you're going to just sit right here just like you are in a human. And you go, I'm not really going to compress on it. Mm -hmm. And that's where you do your compressions. If you have a little a little lap, lap dog, you're more to just squeeze. Just squeeze. Get between them. You just Fingers. wrap and you can just squeeze. See how that works right there? But with these bigger guys. Picture this. Our, we stand up so our heart sits kind of in the middle. Okay. With them, they're built on all fours, so it sits down in the bottom of their chest. It's right, it's right in the bottom. So, so as you compress and you're compressing the ventricles, and that's what you really want to compress. Now, this is a true life saving emergency. You know, so, you want to do that. So, you want to do it about 100. Reach up and give them a breath. Do 100 and then breathe? Mm -hmm. He said, I don't like the breath. What? He knows so you want to. Unless you're asleep, get going. <laughs> <laughs> he wants to do it. He wants to pee us. So, now, so now what, what, you you what, you really, what you really want to do is you want to make sure you've got this mouth good and it's closed off. Take their lips, wrap it around their bottom jaw and everything. So where the only thing that's open is the nose. So you use their jaws as a seal. You pull it down. Use a, 
And then you reach down, just give them a breath. And and the Did you just do it? Okay. Because he freaks out. He's he, I've done it to him before. And he usually looks at me like, what are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> and he's yelling it with his eyes. Yeah, yes. it's called mouth to muzzle. Okay. Well, when you, I mean, this, when, it's when your heart has stopped working. Basically, they're dead. What would, would that be like? Like your shock? Yeah, my car. Okay. Anything that's going to stop the heart. Uh -huh. So you would do it from a trauma just like you would yes, a person? Yes, you can try. Okay. Yes. Okay. Give it a now, yes. Survival rates uh, when you're doing CPR are not good. Except for one trick. I'm going to tell you where you got Oh, yeah. We have the, the nose. Uh, we'll show you that. What's it called? The G? G. 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 Now, if you we'll do start you. having one that's going downhill, right here at the base of Y'all may want to come look. This also works on people. By the way, it works on horses, except you raise their lip because their muzzle's so thick, you raise their lip and you take a needle. Or needle, needle, or needle or a pen, or a pen, or you got anything with your sharp, finger. Any, yeah, even your finger will work. And right where, see the little knee there, you right at the base, mm -hmm. you bury it to the bone. Push hard oh, you can. You bury it to the that bone. That you up. You makes bury you, it to the bone, makes it breathe. makes you breathe. And I will tell you, as Danny said, when they're to that point, it's real slim of getting them back. But I will tell you that within the last six months, Murray brought one back that was dead for five minutes. It just arrested. For five minutes, it was gone. And we used the laser and the acupuncture, and it came back. So you're, you're it is amazing. It. It well, no, but you're all the way it. through. I'm on hold but you're not way. picking up the. You're doing no, it. Uh, on, on the you're only on the horse. Go. Humans, humans, you would only raise, but it's the same thing. It's right where your nose kills into your jaw, yeah, basically. Right okay, but on a dog, you don't yeah. want that out. You just go straight through. And, 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 and every and every and you, you'll you'll stab you'll jab it. And I mean, if the good thing is to get a, an acupuncture nail, they're pretty. You can probably find something. Oh, and that's a really nice to do. Just to have is they come like five or six a little pack. They're disposable, but it doesn't matter. Any type, even uh, you know, a 25 gauge needle. You know, something that your vet has. So as you're asking, maybe to get your syringes for your peroxide, just say, hey, can I get a couple of little 25 gauge needles? All you need is one, and you'll bury it to the bone. Every so often, and let's say you get a response, every so often go up there and, and turn it. That's what they'll do with acupuncture. They'll so they will twist it, it keeps stimulating. So it's not opening an airway, it's just No, this is the, the, this the stimulation okay. to cause the nerves so to continue like a to keep number. breathing. Yep. Right. It's, it's, it's but, just but to, it but works. It's to, yeah. Yeah. Rather than a sternum rub, doesn't work. <laughs> yeah, this works. A sternum rub is just to determine if they're alert and responsive. I know what you're talking about. But... Okay. This way, this is very when it calls them, it stimulates the vagus nerve, which causes them to go. Forces them to take that breath. Take a big deep breath. Right. Okay. And while we're up here, while we've got you here, there is something called the six pack. This is an acupressure point. Six pack. Yes, yeah, called the six pack. And what you do, it's not, and it's not the amount of pressure. You will hook. You know how they all you'll say, oh, rub behind his ears. He likes it. Well, that's true. They do. But what you do is you will take and you're however your hand works on your dog. You want a, a thumb under one ear, the finger on the, right at the base of the ear. On me, it would be right here, right where everything kind of ties together, and then right on top. And if you'll just massage and do that, it will calm them down. I will do that right and it works on unbelievably on horses. I'm like a magician. I walk in with a freezer, won't put his head down, and you can put it up there and do it. And in a minute, he's standing there with his head down, and me talking to him, and he's got his head all the way down. It works great for calming him. I feel it. Okay, I felt that. I yeah. felt that. It quivers a little bit. Anyway. Yeah. And most times, it's not so much. It's kind of slide in and kind of down. Okay. So you'll see a vet tech will come in. If they come in, and you'll see them, they're talking to you, and they stick their hand up under there. They're going, pick, 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 and they're taking their chair there. And they're going to grab right here, and they're going to feel it. But you mm -hmm. can, I mean, you feel heart rate right here. Yeah, I mean, the heart rate, you can get his pulse by holding his heart. Oh, you're up here now, right? Well, yeah, you can do it by his heart also. You don't have to do it back there. And that's what y'all count for a minute. Yeah. Or you can count it for 15 seconds and multiply it, or 10 seconds and multiply it. So it's fine. I'm just not good at math. Yeah. Some things like that, then it's easy. We just yeah. shoot it deep. Uh, and she's on the floor, so.